There's no, no speed. speed control. Let's see if our speed or lock side. And a universe of positive matter, as we would call it, positive matter. And the two combined make nothing. Again. So counter space is similar to this. We have our positive space, counter space. And Steiner says, the interior of the sun is this negative space. He gives the example of a bank account. And I start taking out the contents of that bank account, and I keep doing it. It goes negative. I go into debt. Mm -hmm. And he goes, that would be like this negative space. And that negative space, instead of gravity, um, uh, which uses mass, as they say, to draw things in, it's not that it pushes things out, it sucks things in. So the suction of the sun is what would hold the planets in orbit. I mean, he says that it doesn't explode, it implodes. Right. When they say that they have these things shooting out, that's really not true. They're coming in. Well, there are things going out as well, but now we're, but, but as a reflection of what's coming in. So, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> these things get really, really complicated and they're very, very difficult to penetrate with what we have because all our instrumentation is meant this to earth capture. Bound. Yes, earth it's, bound. it's meant for the earth and we assume That's not everything what happens out up there, there reflects what the, is on the earth. But so isn't. we look for matter, and exactly. when we find it, we think, oh, good, I've discovered a new particle. That doesn't. So velocity, we looked at the speed of light. And what's interesting, we talk about vibrations and the different levels that spiritual beings are at, and we communicate through vibrations and all that. So it says that there's different velocities, and so, Lucifer and Aramon that we've been talking about um, work uh, on different velocities. Um, so it is that differences in velocities are there in the great spiritual streams to which the web and woof of the world is subjected. So all of the weaving, if you can think of the web and then the woof, um, you know, weaving together the fabric of the world, um, these are, are uh, expressed in this way. Um, so the scientific pathway, which has opened out of the most recent times, is compelling, even physics, though, to begin with unconsciously, to go into differences of velocity in a way very similar to the way spiritual science had to do for the all-embracing agencies of cosmic evolution. So he has a lot of sympathy for modern science. And he says some incredible things about the work that these scientists have done to come up with materialistic science, that they will be extremely spiritual in their next lifetime. So this is the picture we have of science in, from science today, that we have a visible light part of the overall electromagnetic spectrum. If you look at Goethe, Goethe will come up with a different spectrum than this when you look at light surrounding darkness instead of darkness surrounding light. This is darkness surrounding light, and you come up with this spectrum. In Goethe's spectrum, in the middle here, you don't have green, you have a peach blossom color, a rosy sort of peach blossom color. And you get a different spectrum. And Steiner says, we have to come to the point where we can see this as a spiral. And we have the first half of the spiral with this spectrum, and then with Goethe's, we have the second half of the spiral. So when you look from the top, it looks like a circle, but actually it's a spiral. And then we go on to the rest of these things. 
in a spiral. So here's that electromagnetic spectrum and with some indications of the size of the wavelength, okay, and you know, the size of a baseball up to the size of a home and a football field and so on, all the way down to the size of a water molecule and even smaller. What fits in those? So we have radio waves way down on this side. So one radio wave is the size of an entire house in its wavelength. So that from the peak to the next peak. And then when we're way down here and gamma rays, for example, we're down into the nanoscale of things that we can't even see anymore by any instrumentation. And then, you know, we have all these other uh, minor spectrums within. So we then have frequencies or waves per second. So we use the speed of light and that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> And then the energy of one photon, so the electron volts going through. And so you can see what impact such a thing has this if it hits you in terms of conservation of energy and passing that on. Now, there's other kinds of movements. We did some in Eurythmy here. Um, the playground swing. Children love this swing. Mm -hmm. back. Push me, mommy. Push me, daddy. Why do children love that so much? And what happens? Do we still love it as adults, mm -hmm. or do we start feeling like it makes us ill or something? Mm -hmm. yeah, the children love it. So we have circadian cycles, which is, you know, when we um, have melatonin being secreted so we can fall asleep and wake up and getting hungry and so on. Um, we also have daily, weekly, monthly rhythms. Um, the moon gave us rhythms. The 28-day cycle of the moon, with its 14 waxing and 14 waning, um, we see in the story of Osiris being cut up into 14 pieces. And that is the cycle of, of the normal cycle for a woman in her menstruation. It's called the female. Moon, but there's a male cycle which is 30 days. And the 30 days through the zodiac is the 360 degrees around the circle. And then we have the five days, some days, some years, six days of chaos to go with it. And things can be reformed. We have seasonal rhythms, like polar ice caps, thaw and melt. And if you haven't seen on YouTube or Facebook, this NASA film, it's quite interesting to watch from a satellite above the North Pole and the shrinking and expanding of this Breathing. ice cap mm -hmm. and, and, the, uh, and the white of the top of the Earth. I have it. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful to see. Um, we have a platonic year, which is 25,000. 920. 960 years, right? 20. 920 years, right. And <laughs> um, once each time through, you'll have an ice age. You might have a warmth age. We have solar system within our galaxy and within our <clears throat> silver river. Um, you know, and where's that all going? Um, and we also talk about a big bang for the universe. It can, expansion, and then later, so many hundreds of billions of years from now, a contraction. And then maybe another one. And how often does that go on? How long does it wait in a prolia before it expands again? So lots of rhythms, lots of oscillations. And in our own lives, we have these. We match up. but. Um, if we just talk science, we talk frequency and wavelength. This is number. We talk about it in a lifeless, soulless way, and we don't care about morality. If we're going to go to the Keeley machine, we need to talk about qualities. We can't just say red is a certain wavelength. 
We have to understand red in a solar way. What is the quality of red? We know that a bulb reacts to red. What happens in our own soul? Why do painters put red where they do? Are they trying to draw your attention into it? What about the play of light and dark? You know, so we have to find this in a living way, as, um, something in which the soul can live into it, in which a moral element can be found in the waves that come from the human being that drive these machines in the future. Number of books, uh, these are all from Steiner, uh, that can help. He gave some scientific lecture courses. The first one was on light, the second one was on warmth, the third is called astronomy, but really it's the relationship of the branches to one another. Oh, that's what it is. With astronomy in particular, but he didn't mm -hmm. want it to be called the astronomy course. He, he, was, pardon? He, he wanted all the people from the different disciplines to come together right. and talk to each other, which they don't now. And they still don't. But, right. but, but they're trying. Right. But they're trying. Right. Um, there were some preliminary science things that he gave. Um, and just some examples from that first science course on light. Um, he talks about electricity and magnetism. And uh, he considers it a study of matter when we're looking at electricity and magnetism. And so here's some of them. I'll read them to you because it's small. The moment we go on to the essential qualities of mass and matter, we are approaching what is akin to those forces which develop in us when we are sleeping, and in particular, dreamless sleep. And when we are going in precisely the same direction, when we descend from the realm of light and sound and warmth into the realm of electrical phenomena. So we're going in the same direction when we are descending from light and these ethers into electricity, we're, we're doing the same kind of descent into a sleeping state. We have no direct experience of the phenomena of our own will. So all we're able to experience in consciousness is our thoughts about them. When we're observing the electrical phenomena? When we, when, when, we are, when we are trying to conceive and work with it, yes. So we're diving down into something that we do not have direct experience. So by not having direct experience, we have to go into something that is akin to trying to penetrate into what's happening in us when we're asleep. Okay? And so for here we are crossing the same boundary as in the outer world, which we're crossing in ourselves when we descend from our thinking and idea forming in uh, our conscious life into our will life. So we talked about will before as being akin to this dreamless sleep. And all that is light and sound and warm is then akin to our conscious life, while all that goes on in the realm of electricity and magnetism is akin, intimately akin, to our unconscious life of will. And so as our children are more and more playing with electrical devices, they are playing with their will. They are falling asleep in this. Is that a good thing? No, it's not. A, I'm not saying that is a good thing. So if it calls for something from us to become more and more conscious in our will, that's we can say is the calling. It's, so whoever, sorry, wherever will is working through the metabolism, there too is working something very similar to the external phenomenon of electricity and magnetism. So we think that in our motor nerves, electricity is flowing by commands from our brain to our muscles to contract and contract. So he says that's not what's going on at all. Those motor nerves are sensing the movement to make sure it's the right movement, but you're moving the muscles through your will. 